Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Lilies and Blush. My name is Suzanne and thank you so much for joining me for today's video which is going to be my review of House of Sky and Breath Crescent City book number two. Um, first I'll go over just my initial thoughts and everything and then we'll do a little spoiler thing which I'll have spoiler warning. Um, I just hit the wall. Uh, spoiler warning going for sure um, when we get to that part. But uh, yeah, so new view, new background, new everything. So bear with me because I don't think I've done a face to face video in a really, really long time, if really ever. I think maybe I have once. Um, so yeah, this is new. Uh, <laughs> normally you just see my hands. So yeah, and then my lovely, I'm in my bedroom, so new filming location and then new background is, well, just a background. You don't normally get a background. Again, you just get my hands and whatever I'm showing you uh, normally, but we've got my lovely bookshelf here. Got my Harry Potter section and then a little like Harry Potter slash bookish box kind of section. My, uh, I think Kingdom of Fear, Twilight, uh, my planner, my Orso planner, for those of you who also watch my planner videos, and then my bookish box special edition books. And then above that is my uh, Sarah J. Mass shelf, which is dedicated to all of the books I have of hers, which I own every single one of them. Um, and I'm just, <laughs> I'm like so excited to talk about this book. I wasn't going to make a video like this at first, but I really love it. I feel like it's a book that just, it literally just released. Uh, I'm filming this on Sunday, what would this be? February 6th? No, that's not right. Um, February 27th, because tomorrow's the 28th. I was like, where am, when am I? Uh, I've been in a cloud, you know, for like a day. I've read, I read this last night. I finished it last night. So, uh, so yeah, it's been out for about 10, 11 days now. So I figure it's a good one to talk about. And yeah, I want to do more content like this. So let me know if you like it or not. But here we go. So um, again, we're talking about A House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass, And it is a thick one. <laughs> I was really shocked when I pulled it out of the box. I pre-ordered mine from Barnes & Noble. It is the exclusive edition, so it does have an extra chapter in the back um, after the end of the book and everything else. It's just like an extra chapter, and it's supposed to be a moment in the life of one of or two of the characters. Um, so mine is Bryce and Hunt, um, and they are the sort of main, main characters of this series, Bryce being the absolute main character. Um, but and then Hunt kind of being the secondary, I guess you would say. So uh, it's like a day in their life during the middle of the book, something that wasn't mentioned in the book. Um, so sort of like an extra chapter that had been kind of pulled out or an extra piece had been pulled out. And then um, I did, there is a, someone on Instagram, I can't remember, I think it was like house dot of dot hurricane. I think was her Instagram and she has all of the different um extra pages booked on there so I think it was Therian, Rune, and is it Rune? Yeah I think it was Therian, Rune, and um Bryson Hunt were the three different special edition chapters you could get from different stores so I think like Target had one maybe or yeah, I think it was Barnes and Noble, BAM, Books a Million, um, and Target maybe was the third one. I can't remember who the third one was, but yeah, so if you got all those, but she has all of them posted on her story, so you can read them if you'd like. I would just suggest not reading them until you're done with the whole book, um, just because it could give away some stuff, kind of. Um, so yeah, but oh my gosh, this book. <laughs> This book, uh, I loved it. I have my like notes I wrote down here because I was like, I gotta get my thoughts straight. I'm just gonna babble this whole video if I don't. So love the book, first and foremost, just love it. I love Sarah's storytelling. I love her um, world building. I, I just love the way she writes. Um, this book, very similar for me, was like A Court of Thorns and Roses. So was Crescent City 1. Um, where it took me a minute to get into it, uh, I feel like that's a common theme with the Crescent City ones is like they start kind of slow 
Um, but then once you get into like, maybe I would say like page 50 to a hundred, you're just like grabbed and you're just there and you're, you're on for the roller coaster ride. That is these books because they are a roller coaster ride. They, uh, one of my notes was it hits you like a, a brick wall. Like it really, or like a ton of bricks. I said, I hate you like a ton of bricks. Like it really does. It just, it is heart wrenching. It is just, uh, I just can't even, I just, the words, I don't have them. I don't know why I'm making a video because I just can't put this into words, how much I love this book. So, um, yeah, to start off, there's the storytelling and the world building, just so good with disruptive words, like really immersing you in the world. Um, she's created now three different fantasy worlds and while they all have things linked like there's fae or there's um you know magic and it's all fantasy based and then there's different types of magic and different types of things going on um and then you usually have this like long kind of story that just takes you on these crazy twists and turns and you don't really know who the bad guy is and you don't really know what to expect next and then you're like is so are we gonna lose somebody like it, this is a roller coaster ride for sure but it's just so immersive and like i was saying there's three different worlds now that she's created in her in her series um from throne of glass to court of thorns and roses and now crescent city being the third one she started creating um but even though they're similar they're also very different and it, so it draws you in in a different way and the characters are different like it's not like you're reading about the same characters it's always kind of my concern when I'm reading a fantasy author um and they've got multiple series that all kind of came out around the same time is are we just going to be getting a rehash of the other series like the first series is the next one a rehash of the first and so on because maybe like there's things she didn't get to do in the first series now she wants to do in this one and so now she's just making up a new series to do those things it doesn't feel like that at all with her books um it feels like they're all very new and coming from a different place and just amazing but then they also feel like they can meld together which you know spoil alert they definitely can and and potentially do like I think most of us if you've read Thorn of Glass or Thorn of Glass Throne of Glass <laughs> Thorn of I'm combining them together now <laughs> Throne of Glass and A Court of Thorns and Roses if you've read that whole series um in Throne of Glass there's this like spoiler thing um of you know Aelin you know falling through um time holes or whatever they were I can't remember exactly what word they would have used to describe them but basically she's falling through different worlds um, and in one, it was thought that maybe she was seeing Ryzen and Aelin, or not, you know, again, I'm saying Aelin, Ryzen and Freya, and so, uh, Fe Freya, Freya, okay, I'm gonna mess that up a little bit, I'm gonna probably mess up names a little, uh, just because, again, we're reading them, and I don't, I like audiobooks, but I don't love them, so I haven't heard the audiobooks version of saying the names a lot of the time, so, um, yeah, but anyways, so there's a whole thing with that, if you have read those books, if you haven't, sorry, but <laughs> there is a whole thing with that. So it kind of feels like she's piecing them together. Um, I'll kind of go over, I'm, I'm starting to jump ahead to like spoiler stuff. So I'll, I'll go over that stuff definitely in the spoiler thing and, and what I think is happening um, and where everything is going. But just to say, like, it's not going to feel like you're reading the same series over and over again. It's not like, oh, I'm spent like, you know, six months trying to read through the Throne of Glass series and all of those books. And then now I'm reading A Court of Thorns and Roses and it feels like the same story. No, it's going to feel very different. Um, but yeah, I, I love it. So it did take me 10 days to read this. I'm reading this. I finished this. Um, so the 26th of February. Uh, that is it. This doesn't feel right for some reason. Is it really? No, yeah, it is. Okay, it's a today's the twenty. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I have to like stop the video and go look at a calendar right now. Um, so yeah, it's I finished it on the February twenty sixth, and um, at like well, actually, I finished it really today at one a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so really I finished it February 27th at like one o'clock in the morning because I just could not stop. I literally didn't even know it was that late. I just had to get to the end. Um, oh my gosh, I know everybody's staying at the ending. The ending is just everything to me, the ending. Um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, just blown, mind blown uh, and everything else. And uh, so like I was kind of saying, you know, there, there definitely were some slow parts. It definitely is a slow burn. 
um, on the spice level as well. It is a slow burn on the spice, I feel like, in a way, kinda, kinda, sorta. So I'll, I'll get to that in a second too. And then that'll definitely be a part of the spoiler thing part too. But it was like, yeah, there's just some slower parts. It's kind of a slow burn uh, at first. And I feel like Crescent City 1, um, House of Earth and Blood, that one was similar. It took me a minute to get into it. New characters, new world. I'm kind of trying to figure everything out um, and everything. So that definitely took a little bit of um, time for me to kind of get into it again and then remember everything. Because second book, trying to remember everything. I didn't reread the first one again. Um, I don't usually do that. Sometimes I will if I'm really feeling like I need to or it's been a really long time, but it's maybe been less than a year since I read Crescent City. So I don't, I didn't think I needed to reread it, but it might've been good for me to reread it because I was trying to remember things that happened. But as you read through the book, like things, you know, my memory was kind of coming like, oh yeah, that happened. And it's like, oh yeah, that's what happened. And um, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Like, so uh, yeah, it was definitely it felt like I was stepping right back into the story at the same time as it definitely felt like a new story. So if that made any sense. And then, um, all right. And then, okay. So it is spicy, just uh, FYI. So it is adults like level spicy. Um, there's sex scenes in the whole thing. Uh, so that just FYI and that, but spicy level is there. Um, it the build up on that spice like for the two main characters was a plus 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 it literally had me going like oh just like get together already and just like do it already literally just do it already uh so yeah it was definitely a like torture torture absolute torture so yeah thank you thank you sjm for that torture in the beginning um until we finally get to some sassy time between the two main characters but there was some other spice with other characters so i do appreciate that as well not just focusing on the two main characters like they're the only ones capable of having sex in the in the book especially when she does switch from point of views a lot like you get the point of view of bryce and rune and therian and um ethan and so you know it's not they're allowed to have spicy time too so especially if they have a willing uh, consensual partner to the spicy time so yeah I uh was I was appreciative of that as well that it wasn't just the same two characters um and it wasn't the same stuff happening every time she was talking about it so it didn't feel like oh this is just in it for the sake of adding you know a sex scene to the book so yeah um it was it was good it was good stuff I really really liked it and the last thing like, I want to try to do whenever I do these book reviews is kind of talk about re-readability. So for me, it's really important when I own a book, when I buy a book, I'm going to, I want a physical copy of it because I know I'm going to want to reread it or possibly also loan it out. But mostly because I, I know I'm going to want to reread it. And I take a risk when I buy new books, physical um, I know I can always donate them or sell them or whatever too if I don't end up liking them or feeling that way but really the ones on my shelf are ones that I feel like I'm going to reread other than some of my Harry Potter stuff. I, obviously the Harry Potter books themselves I reread but some of like the um, sort of just info books or whatever just because I'm a Harry Potter nerd and my family keeps buying me things like that for Christmas and my birthday. <laughs> um, but for like the Twilight series I reread that every once in a while. Um, Kingdom of feared I absolutely adore that series as well so I reread those like some of the other series I have on there it's because I enjoyed them so much that I want to keep them and there's so there's a reason that I ended up because I started out Kendall reading A Court of Thorns and Roses but after that first one and I was like there's more and there's more coming I need more so that's when I bought started buying them physically and then I eventually bought the first one in physical form just because I prefer reading physical books I don't mind my Kindle app or anything like that. I don't own a Kindle, but I'll use it on a tablet or phone um, for that portability and ease. But I definitely, if it's a book I'm going to reread and really want to have and reread, I'm going to have it in physical form. So, um, so yeah, I would say this book has high rereadability. I definitely would reread this series in whole, like when all of the books are out. I will probably like take a few months to like get back all the pieces of myself <laughs> that have shattered across the world from 
SJM's earth shattering things that she does to us but um, which I'm sure are coming in in the next books but I think I will definitely reread that series I already want to reread A Court of Thorns and Roses um now that I've read Throne of Glass all the way through and then I've read the second book I'm now wanting to kind of start and I want to read A Court of Thorns and Roses again so I I definitely um feel like the the rereadability um, is really, really good. Um, it's how I feel about video games too. Like if you're not willing to play them more than well, like, okay, yeah, you played it once through and it was really great, but are you going to play it again? That really, you know, to me decides whether it's really, truly worth it to get it because, you know, you have them forever potentially. And it's a thing that you have to now cart around with you, you know, everywhere you go, unless you, you get rid of them. So yeah, I feel like, it's definitely rereadability is amazing. So now we're going to get to the part of spoilers. So spoiler warning, spoiler warning, spoiler warning. Turn this off if you don't, if you have not read the book yet, or if you plan to, um, do not watch this unless you are okay with having things spoiled. So I am so desperate for, okay, spoiler starting, spoiler starting. Again, spoiler warning. Uh, I am going to put the book down. I am just blown my my like I said earth shattering pieces of me scattered all over the place like I was literally as I was reading that last chapter I was just like freaking out and making all kinds of weird sounds it was like 1 a.m and I was luckily sitting over in my desk in my living room space and I was just like, ah, like <laughs> silence even like oh my god oh my god I'm like uh, okay, so I want to talk about some other stuff first before we get to the big one because I feel like the big one's gonna make me blab for like ever. Um, so I, I kind of want to just talk, I guess, the different relationships and stuff first off. So we'll start Hind and Rune. My thoughts. I love, to be honest. Like I, I've read a few things online, um, and people like didn't love that necessarily, but I did. I thought it was super awesome. I was very excited. Rune found someone. I mean, I, I guess at the end of the book, it was definitely unsure whether he was okay with this. Like, but it really felt like, oh my God, are they mates? Like, are they, well, that would be amazing. Um, I, from the beginning of the book, like I, honestly, that first scene with the hind and Sophie Renast, I was like, oh no, she's evil. Like, okay, yeah, bad guy doing bad guy stuff. It's whatever. Um, but then when it was revealed that she was saved, I did wonder if maybe the hind had done something to save her. But I was like, no, it really does seem like the hind is evil. She's with, you know, Pollux and he's a horrible person, um, you know, tried to sexually assault some girl in the city. Like, he's just terrible. He horrible 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 uh male and i keep saying person but i have to remember their lingo male um so horrible male and as a female like she just didn't seem like that great either but once rune started doing the um mind to mind connection with day i was starting to want i was of course like you know all of us probably were like who is it who is day um obviously they have to know a lot of information i was saying it can't be somebody who works with the asteri because of some of the other things they said and things like that and and what they were applying so i didn't think it was someone that was like that we didn't know it, it had to be someone we already knew it felt like in the way that that conversations were going and the things that were being said and the way things were worded it felt like someone we probably already knew so from the character options we already knew i did think it was celestina at one point um but then obviously that got scratched up scratched off when with um, you know, hypoxia and her in the closet, which I'll get to that in a second. Um, and stuff like that. So I think when I realized it was the hind or had to be the hind was after the first time that she got pulled away, uh, you know, forcibly in pain to have sex with the male that was sleeping beside her. And when she came back in the conversation she had with her and I was like, oh yeah, it's the hind because that has to be Paul. Like, I don't, there was no other couples that we knew like that or no other females that we knew that were paired up. So I was like, it has to be the hind. She's the only one who's paired up with someone right now. And I could see again, her using that as a ruse to cover up things for her and to, to hide her true intentions. Um, she's Hypaxia's sister and the way Hypaxia is, I know, I know Hind was raised by her father's people, but it just didn't seem like 
that was quite possible that she was that evil anymore. Um, once she saved um, them at the rebel base, I can't remember what the, or Ijir, Ijir, Y-D-A-R. Once she saved them there, or we learned she saved them there, but once she was there and she dropped the stone in the water and was like, oh yeah, just like I did with Sophie, I was like, bam, oh, it's her. It's the hind. 100%, it has to be her. And then when he went to the fountain and it was a harpy there and then the hind was walking through to go there, I was like, yep, yeah, okay, it's the hind. Like, I knew it. I was, yeah, I was on it. I, I got those hints. <laughs> Uh, I was just, yeah, I was kind of excited about it, to be honest. I like the idea of a deep undercover, like, yeah, she's doing evil, but, you know, maybe she's doing it for a reason, you know, and that there's that possibility. I can't wait. I'm hoping in the second book we dive more into her history and learn a little bit more about her and how she got into this situation. Like, is, is she start out that way? Was that her intentions from the beginning? Or was that just you know, something that something happened to her, sort of like the Hellhound, which is my next one. The Hellhound and Danica. That's, I wanted to cry. Okay, from the beginning, after the Hellhound was being kind of nice to him and like helping and not telling on him, I knew he had to be a good guy, like down deep. Um, someone was saying it gave them um, vibes from someone from Throne of Glass. And I want to say, yes, it was like in the last book, um, I, I can't remember his name. Was it Fendir? Fen, Fendir? Fenrir? Fen, I think it was Fendir. And it was the, he was a character who um, was helping out a, a girl who was injured and everything in that book. And they end up falling in love and everything. And it reminded me of that in a way, like Hellhound's behavior. Like, yeah, he's kind of bad, but, and, and messed up, but it's for, you know, but love changed him like love made him realize who he could really be and that he wanted to be a better person and and Danica helped him with that and I was just like yeah I <laughs> that uh, shocked me I definitely didn't see I saw Hellhound being an actually good guy but I did not see the Danica Hellhound thing and but of course that helps kind of explain um the change and like of course that would have happened right after Hunt left so Hunt would have had no idea that Hellhound kind of changed and was trying to deter uh Sandriel and the things that she was doing and everything else so yeah it was that was definitely a shocker but I again I like it I don't think I dislike any of the pairings except the Celestina Hypoxia one so I'll get to that then next so Celestina Hypoxia obviously big shocker definitely did not see that coming how the hell did they even meet how do they even know each other I thought Hypoxia was like from her story it sounds like she was like you know stuck in this place where her mom raised her with those three ghost tutors teaching her and then she came to the city in the spring after her mother died to try to be like experience normal life and so it's like so when did she meet Celestina when she was trapped in, was that near Celestina's area where she was, um, you know, Archangel over before? Or like what, how did they even get together? That kind of felt like it came really out of nowhere. Um, but it's not bad. I didn't hate it. I just hate it at the end. Um, or not hated it. I just don't love it. Like it's not my favorite. I, Hypaxia seems like so amazing and awesome. And Celestina seems amazing too at first. Like she seems really kind and really like understanding and like it definitely made my like heart wrench when she was talking about how she tried so many times to buy Hunt and get him away from Sandriel and Micah and that like just made me like really like her but then when she told Hunt that love is a trap that kind of scared me a little I was like whoa why is she so negative I maybe it's just the whole like we can never be together thing um you know she's being forced to marry Ephraim and then you know Hypaxia is now marrying Rune and you know like are they really ever going to be allowed to be together you know um the Siri you're never going to let them be so I, I I thought that was it and then to learn that she had betrayed all of them um in order to in her mind protect Hypaxia and to kind of like seem like the series little happy peppy dog or whatever like you know oh I'm I'm so yours but so don't look at me too closely and therefore you know destroy the love of my life um yeah I just I don't know that just made me I guess not like her because if she truly 
loved hypaxia, she would have definitely not done that, I feel like. Like, if she truly belonged with hypaxia, I feel like that, I don't know. I can't, it just feels wrong that she did that thing. I mean, we all make choices based on love or what we think is best for the person we love that might the other person we the person we love might not like and that's what I feel like is going to happen if Hypaxia learns of what Celestina did it'll cause even more issues and so then I just don't see them as lifelong together whereas the couples coming together now I feel like those could definitely go the distance and like be together forever and true mates and everything so I just am wondering then where Hypaxia goes like um if her preference is just females how does she end up with who what possible characters could she end up with we really don't have very many female characters left that aren't coupled up with anybody um most of the group is kind of male dominated and dominated 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 so I feel like you know so does she end up with Arian like is she bi is she you know just not care and it's just love is love kind of thing like is she gonna end up with Therian then um their relationship seems really great and by the way, that Therian giving himself up to the Viper Queen to get away from the River Queen. I'm like, no, don't do it. But I, at the, at the same time, I was like, okay, at least now he's above. He can, he's not forced to be beneath and trapped where his friends can't help him. And at least now that he's above, he can be helped and his friends can help him. Um, and, you know, like, but Bryce says, oh, the, a favor to the Viper Queen, right? So that's kind of scary too um so yeah maybe they I can't wait to find out where that goes if they're in it continues to be trapped by the viper queen or if he ends up um getting free of that and ending up somewhere else but I am I just don't see Celestina Hypaxia lasting the whole series I don't know but I'm I'm willing I'm up for redemption story I'm up for she made bad choices and now she's gonna fix them so her and Hypaxia can be happy and healthy together but I just don't see that being a very healthy relationship in the long run so I don't know. Uh, and then we've got, okay. So I'm, I'm trying to go through the non-major ones first. Ethan, I like you like kind of knew in the other book that he probably had a crush on her or that like he had feelings for her. He was upset with her. Like that could be a thing. And then they really bring it full force in this. Like, yes, he did have full blown feelings for Bryce. He thought she was going to be his wife. Like he was just waiting to potentially, you know, get her to his side, um, away from his brother and everything else. And, but you know, like the way that he reacted to everything, not even talking to her or getting her side or, or being there for her at all just makes you kind of like, okay, no bro. Like, it's not meant to be at all like there's someone out there for you but it's not her and then this mystic alpha female comes up and oh my gosh yes please yes please like that would be perfect he's an alpha she's an alpha like I don't know if two alphas could really be together but why not it's a fantasy novel anything can happen uh <laughs> you have an angel and a half fae half female uh or half human and that are mated you know, who knows? So, and then Danica and a fae are mated because Hellhound is most likely a fae from uh, a different world. I won't say, I won't go there yet. I'm not gonna go there yet. But most likely he is a fae that we, we know of strongly from another world. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious about the Ethan and the Mystic Alpha. I want to learn more about her. How is she related to the Fenrir line? How is, you know, if she's a mystic and there's all that stuff going on with her, like she's been that way, you know, deep in her mind for a long time. Can she even function and rule? Like, how is that going to work? Can she kind of come back to a state of, of normalcy? I hate using that word, but like, you know, where she's able to be a functioning leader and then also be a mystic like is that possible they made it kind of sound like it wasn't in a way or just because she's been abused for a long time for her powers um and just made to use only her powers and nothing else is that just because that's you know we saw that just because that's what those three mystics were being you know forced to do is like they're not really normal acting like normal people just because they are forced to constantly be in their power um, is that, I hope that made sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm curious to see where all that goes and I want to definitely learn more about it. So I'm definitely game for some more Ethan mystic wolf alpha, 
um, in the future. And then let's see. Okay. So now we'll talk about Bryce and Hunt and the fact that they're maids. And I'm so excited about that. I love them together. Other people are like, yeah, they're not going the distance. Like, no, there's something else going to happen now, especially with this new twist ending. People are contemplating other characters from other worlds. And I'm just like, no, I think they're perfect together. They match each other perfectly. Their flow is great. They really remind me of Ryzen and Freya and their mate relationship. So I feel like this is it. I don't think SJM will rip them apart, but she's, she might prove me wrong. <laughs> and then I will be really sad, but you know what? <laughs> it's her, it's her series. Um, but I, I really think that they could go the distance. I do. I do really love their relationship. That slow burn killed me. I was, I have one friend who is reading these novels as well. She has not read the new one and she, I think is still reading A Court of Sil Silver Flames. Um, and so, but so I was like not wanting to spoil her stuff for her, but I was reading it at work. She's a coworker and I was reading it at work at lunch and I just went into her and I was just like holding the book and I was like, why <laughs> just I'm like so like I was just like oh I was like shaking the book like will you just get together already <laughs> like just that slow burn was literally killing me it had me on edge constantly every page every time anything came up with them I was like this is it nope this is it nope I was yelling at Ethan like shut up go away offer to go to Rune's house like just go already like Rune offer him to live it with you guys already like just do it now <laughs> right now <laughs> please so that we can just have this and then the fact that they teleport or she teleported them is just crazy 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 to me like that was just oh it was wow just wow my dog is whining at my door that I have closed <laughs> one second Max Go lay down. He does not like it when I'm in rooms without him. Uh, but normally it's vice versa. Like he's in the bedroom and I'll kind of close him in here because he barks. So yeah, sorry about that. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Bryce and Hunt. Love it. I honestly personally love it. I love both of them as characters. Bryce has been through a lot. Hunt has been through a lot. And I love those stories. I just love characters that feel real. You know, they haven't led this fantasy happy life. They're not, you know, they struggle, they make mistakes. They, they don't, they're not always healthy. They're not always having healthy relationships, but I feel like theirs is a really healthy relationship. I really do. Um, minus Bryce still not telling secret plans to hunt, <laughs> but I get sometimes why she does and he, and it's good because they talk it out and then he gets it too. So, um, I think, I don't know. I, I just love their relationship a lot. Just love it a lot. So I'm excited to get more in CC3. Uh, and then before, again, before I dive, okay, well, this, I guess this is all part of it, right? So that last part, like I said, I was like, oh, I was like silently screaming. That whole part, I was like, when she shows up and she's like, it's manicured wands and looks so nice and pretty. And I was like, she went there. <laughs> she went to prison. Prison, right? Am I, am I mixing up my places? I might be mixing up my places. I was going to stand up and like <laughs> go look, but, uh, I'll wait, but she's there. She's, she's with the night court. And I'm just like, Oh, I can't believe that that's where it's sent her. But it makes sense. Right. Because that's where the Asteri were taught. That's what Regulus was talking about. He was saying that he wanted their first task was going to be to go to that world where they'd been taken down before and destroy it and take it back and like that was the land and I saw somebody um posted and I'm part of a spoiler Facebook group so there is one if you want to go look at House of Sky of Breath it's a spoiler group where you can vent and talk about all of that stuff um I did go on there and and talk a little bit but I just wanted to like talk talk it out not type it out uh so that's this one this video came from um but yeah so I had to just let my dog in because <laughs> he was crying and it was distracting my brain. Um, so yeah, so now if you hear noises, it's, it's him. Bless you. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, where was I? She's with the night court. Like that's what immediately what I thought. I was like, oh my gosh, she went there. She's in their world. Um, like manicure, like it was just making me think city. Whereas in... Um, I feel like 
in the throne of glass world it wouldn't be like that like that definitely described to me like the night court and where they live and where they're from like it definitely felt that way so I was like oh my gosh that's that's them and then when it was a male and leathery wings and she kept saying leathery wings and I was like yes it's them <laughs> and then when he introduced himself and said his name was Ryzen I was like yeah Yes, it is them. Like, I was just, I am so excited about this. I am so excited about a crossover. I, now it finally makes sense to me, her book writing, like, the fact that she stopped writing a Kodar books and then started writing Crescent City makes so much sense to me. She said that she's working on Crescent City 3 already. So again, makes sense to me. Like, now it all is coming together. We know the master plan. <laughs> or at least we're in on the beginnings of the master plan. I was just like, yes. Uh, I am I am so beyond 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 about this book. I just I love it. I really really love it. Um I have so many theories about things now. I I'm wondering if there's going to be a throne of glass crossover too. I'm wondering if the Valg are the Asteri um because we haven't really come up pawn that in like the fey world in in Aelin's world really sounds what you know how they turn into animals that really sounds like where the hellhound is probably from um and the other shifters that are really fey like um the wolf shifters and everything else like they're made to feel like they're werewolves but really they're more like the fey and their shifters and just that's just like Aelin's world and the fae there that shift into animals um and so I, I feel like that would be a good crossover too to get their help against them like they've defeated the Valg before if these three are the Valg it really feels that way um I didn't dive too much into that I was gonna research it a little before this video but I, I didn't get the chance to to see like if there are any passage kind of links that describe the Valg sort of the way the Assyria are described um, I think the only thing that I was tripped up on that kind of theory that they're the similar is the sisters part, like the brothers and sisters of the Assyri. And then in the Val, it was all about the male princes. And then like they got the ability to move through worlds um, from the queen. So it just felt like, you know, maybe that wouldn't be exact. They weren't exactly the same bad guys, but at the same time, it, you know moving through worlds the way they move through worlds the everything else and then definitely like when they were describing where the starborn pipe came from i remember descriptions of that like in those books as well and so it really made me think that there was going to be like a, there's a connection to those worlds and so like i didn't think oh we're not getting a crossover at first before that you know last chapter it's like oh maybe we're not going to get a crossover but maybe we're going to get like sort of like i said like in throne of glass and a kodar we get that like hint at each other like oh you're you know this is just throwing it out that those worlds exist in the same universe basically um sort of like the marvel universe you know so like they're in the same universe or they're in the same realm of possibility um, and they're all interconnected in some ways, but the stories of these characters aren't going to connect to those characters. But now we're for real getting a crossover and I'm just, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I don't believe in the whole Asriel uh, Bryce thing. People are throwing that around and I don't want that whatsoever. I want Asriel to find his own person. Um, but hey, that could be a Hypaxia Azriel thing, you know? Like, I kind of want him to have his own person that's not having belonged to someone else. It feels like he just keeps doing that, you know? Like, in, again, a Kodar spoilers, I guess, but, you know, um, I can't remember her name. Nesta and Freya's sister, like, she's mated to Lucian and then you know they've got something going on either they're friendly or whatever like there's always been hints at something going on between the two of them um and then you know him and more and more not loving him um and then you've got um and more you know more not loving him back really or really doing anything with him you know and then you've got uh 
And then, you know, if he were to try, like, be mated to Bryce or have feelings for Bryce, again, that would be another person that Bryce is with Hunt. Like, you know, I, I don't want that for him. He's such a good guy. I want him to have his own person that's all his own and not, you know, uh, yeah, having a love triangle again. He doesn't need another love triangle, guys. He does not need another love triangle. So I don't, I don't trust in that theory. I don't, I'm not vibing with that theory. I truly feel Rune and, or not Rune, uh, <laughs> that Bryce and Hunt are, uh, mates and that's it. They're mates, guys. They're mates. Just leave them alone. <laughs> and Sarah, leave them alone. Like, they're mates. Just don't, don't do that to us, please. Um, it's crazy that Ryzen looks like Rune, but makes so much sense if that's where they're originally from. Um... Yeah, I just, I'm, I was so ecstatic. They were describing the people in the room with her and like the living room space. And it was just like, yes, that's them. Like, I was just like, yes, 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 yes. I was so excited. Uh, that's, I was like silently screaming. I was like, oh, yay. Um, yeah, it was just, it's amazing. I, I am stoked. Funny story. Um, is that I <laughs> got these bookmarks recently from um, Bookish Box and in one of my books, or in one of my boxes, I guess I should say. And this was the one I chose because it was this dark blue and I loved, you know, the crescent moons on it and how pretty that is. And I was like, oh, it's a perfect bookmark for, um, you know, House of Sky and Breath. And so I totally was using this bookmark the whole entire time. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that insane? Like, Rizand and then Rizand in the book. <laughs> I manifested Rizand. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't get over it. I'm wearing my Night Court shirt from, um, Ampersand shirt from Bookish Box as well. I'm just like, oh, yes. I, I do have to say, like, a Kodar is one of my number one favorite series. So I'm just excited that they get to be, you know, that I'm getting more of them. Um, I love them so much. And I'm, I'm so excited that I'm getting more of them. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm just, I have so many feelings, so many feelings about this book. It's just, but it's all good. It's all good feelings. Like, you know, I... I have hope and optimism that all will work out in the end the same way it has in her previous books. You know, we might lose some people along the way. We lost Cormac, which sucks. Um, and it leaves me wondering what's going to happen to the Avalon Fae. Like that, I feel like he would have been a really good leader for them at that point. But I also felt like he went a little cray cray at the end. So maybe not. <laughs> maybe it is good that he he's moved on. Um, I want to learn more about the whole, like, second light thing, um, and, and how they're going to fix that exactly, but I feel like you just get rid of the bone quarter, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's just so much, so much to process that my brain is still processing for sure, but I loved it. Um, I really recommend you read it. If you, well, I, if you're watching this part, I hope you have read it. <laughs> if you skip to the end of my video, um, to just hear me say goodbye though, please read if you haven't read. Um, and let me know what you guys thought. If you have read it, um, if you did watch this video all the way through, do you agree, disagree with any of the things I said? Um, let me know. But yeah, please comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.